coming along nicely. That smells good. I won't say anything about smell-o-vision because my <laughs> bartender, Carol, gave me a hard time about it last time. So she, Carol, she gave us a hard time about yeah, it. Yeah, so Carol, if you're watching, I told Carol when she gets her own cooking show, she can start making fun of me, but until that point in time, she's not allowed to. Emerald, Emerald uses that term a lot, smell-o-vision. Smell-o-vision? Well, then I take it back. I don't want to be compared with Emerald in any way. Thank you. That's a good, good thing to <laughs> well, maybe just his bank account. <laughs> We're starting a second batch. How long on each side, Scott? What was that? Uh, the veal? Probably minute. three minutes on either okay. side. Three minutes on either side. Because as I said, we're going to finish it. We're going to finish the sauce in the pan. And once again, you know my motto, the less pans the better, uh, less we have to clean up, less we have to uh, wash at the, end of the, at the end of the evening. So I try and keep everything one sauce. You know, I love pan sauces where you can put something right in the saute pan, make the sauce right in the pan. You don't have to start another, another pan to get dirty. I'm gonna check my potatoes. Those are coming along nicely. And one thing you do have to consider when you do do batches like this is that your pan's going to cool down between batches or when you're cooking a batch. So normally what I like to do will once we take this batch out, we'll leave it out of the let the pan warm up a little bit before we get into this third batch here. Okay, so we've got our veal all sauteed. Going to set this aside. Now all that stuff on the bottom of the pan, Yummo. that's good stuff. We want that. We want that for sure. We don't necessarily want too much of this oil, so I'm going to pour some of it off. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna, what's called deglaze the pan, which is basically get all those nice little brown bits off the bottom. Got a little bit of white wine. Always hold it off the flame, please, so you don't blow yourself up. There we go. We're gonna let that cook down, put it back on the heat. And this is, uh, you know, if you've ever roasted meats or chicken or turkey or whatever, you take your roasting pan out, put your roasting pan on a burner, add your liquid, scrape all this good stuff down. Because those are, all those little bits and pieces are really what bring, bring flavor. basically just scrape it all off the bottom. And there we go. We're going to wait until that comes up to a little bit of a boil for us. Let's it start reducing a little bit. I'm going to check our carrots. We're getting close there. Okay, we've got a little simmer going on here. I like to, uh, you put a little bit extra wine in there because you want the wine to cook out. You don't want that heavy wine flavor. You just kind of want the essence of the wine left behind. Normally, uh, white and red wine don't necessarily flame very well, but when you're dealing with other liquors, um, always be careful by the open flame because the vapors from the alcohol will get down in there and will ignite. And generally, what you, basically what you're doing there is when you ignite the alcohol is you're burning off the actual alcohol and you're just leaving the uh, essence of the, of the liqueur that you're using. Okay, got some capers we're going to add.
And then basically what we're, do, we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a quick little pan sauce. We're gonna let that come back up to temperature again. Now the capers are in there. Cooled it down a little bit. I'm gonna check my spuds one more time. There's always one for the chef. More time. So we've got this back up to temperature. We're just going to add little bits of whole butter. Now basically all you do is just swirl this around and you'll see it start to thicken. You can take it off the heat and that butter will just slowly melt in thicken up. Can you see that alright Bob? Yep. You can see those little bits of caramelized veal in there. I'm going to add some fresh lemon. thicken up a little bit, let it reduce down just a touch. Keep it moving. There we go. I think we're ready. Veal right back into it. With the juices too, right? Oh yeah. You want got to get those juices in there. That's the key. People always ask why does restaurant food taste so good and part of the reason is because we use lots of butter. Not necessarily everything but the items that call for it. And we're just gonna let this, uh, I'm just gonna let this simmer a little bit just to finish up cooking that veal through. And while that's doing that, I think our uh, we might be ready to blend our carrot soup. Perfect. Okay. Makes you appreciate what it takes to serve a lot of people in an evening. <laughs> well. We obviously normally have a lot of things done up in advance. Okay. All right. So our veal is basically done, really. Sorry, I'm getting too close to you. Veal piccata. there. Now all we're going to do with this basically we got your boiled carrots, onions, a little bit of chicken stock, orange juice. We'll get it blended up and then we'll do our final might have to do this in a, a batch or two. I'm not going to test the uh, abilities of this blender, so I'm just going to do it in. I'm going to do it in two <laughs> batches. You don't get to work with the Be careful, very Ginger. Often. Yeah, really. <laughs> Circa 1965. 